Hello, I'm Aaron Gemmel, and welcome to this week's uh, edition of Hot Seat Sports Talk. A uh, couple quick, couple quick announcements before we get the show up and running. Uh, first of all, thank you for tuning in, and uh, we apologize for any uh, technical difficulties we had with Kevin's connection. Uh, it's a little spotty sometimes, so I apologize for that before we get going. And uh, second, this is the first show of the of the uh, double header this week. Uh, tune in Thursdays. We welcome uh, Grace Butler of the Central Michigan women's volleyball team. Uh, to the show, first volleyball player uh, ever to be on the show. And then finally, uh, next week, uh, August 12th, we welcome the 15th president of Central Michigan University, Mr. Bob Davies. That's going to be a fifth great interview to end the season on. So make sure you tune in for that. Without further ado, let's get things started. Kevin, to all the viewers uh, who don't know, uh, where did you where did you go to high school, and did you play any other sports in high school? Um, I went to Warren D. LaSalle, uh, an all boys Catholic school, and no basketball was the only sport I played in high school. All right, so like you said, you went to Warren D. LaSalle High School and earned a lot of honors for your work in the classroom and on the court. Which of those were you most proud of to get the awards on the court, or for your work in the classroom off the court? Um, I say both, honestly. I mean, DOSL is kind of known to being, uh, you know, a good school. And a lot of people just think, at least I did when I, before I went there, that it was going to be harder or whatnot. But I ended up finishing with a, you know, really good GPA and did pretty good on my ACTs and whatnot. So I was really proud of how I did in high school. And then, of course, in basketball, just getting the opportunity to play at a D1 school and having the career I had at DLSL. I mean, I had no regrets with that either. So both, honestly, I don't think I could pick one over the other. Yeah. So yeah. So your career at DLSL, it was, it was a, it was a really good career, even though you didn't run into uh Frazier high school or any other, uh, you know, you ran into some other Mac teams around uh, Frazier's division, but you never played Frazier. Uh, that, that's my alma mater. So, uh, <laughs> So when you graduated from DLSL, did you get any other offers from any schools, and did you visit those schools? Um, no, my only other offer I had was uh, Detroit Mercy, and I visited them, and then I visited Cornell, and uh, I was in talks with some other Mac schools at the time, like uh, Western, um, Akron, and uh, Toledo a little bit. So you know, I was talking to some schools, but I only had two offers at the time. When I committed. Well, you committed to the you committed to the right school. At least, thank God you didn't go to Western. Uh, yeah, so, so can you can you explain the uh diff- the jump in difficulty from high school ball to transitioning to Division One college basketball? Um, it definitely is just it's different just in terms of yeah, of course, skill, but. You know, a lot of it is, you know, physicality because a lot of players that come in, they might be, they might be skilled enough to play at D1 level already. But the, you know, a lot of people aren't used to playing against the height they are playing. They're, we're playing against day in day out. I mean, obviously the players you're playing against who are juniors and seniors a lot of times are, you know, a lot stronger than your freshmen and sophomores coming in, and uh, you know, it's just getting used to that that new physical aspect of the game. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, what made you what made you choose Central Michigan over uh, the other you know the other schools that made you offers that reached out to you? Um, you know, for me, like I said, I, I visited Central a few times, and you know, I just got a different feel when I came here. Um, you know, I knew a few people that went to Central that vouched for it, told me it was a good school, they had a good time there. You know, and uh, just talking with the coaching staff and, and um, you know, getting a chance to go to a few games, see how they play and whatnot, you know, just looked really attractive to me, you know, to go there. Also, it helped that it's not that far from where I'm from. So I could, if I right. wanted to go home or if I needed to go home, you know, it's only like a two and a half hour drive. So, you know, those things. 
Yeah, exa- exactly. That's the, uh, one of the main reasons why I chose it. Chose it as well. Uh, was there is there anything about the campus that stood out to you when you uh, when you chose Central? Um, I wouldn't say anything that stood out. You know, too much. I mean, it's definitely different than a lot of the schools we we play against or we go to. Just you know, uh, I I mean, not that Mount Pleasant itself is very rural, but like you know the surrounding areas are kind of more rural than I'm used to. And, you know, from the schools we played against, it looks like it's a lot more rural than other areas. But other than that, I mean, it looks, it looks pretty similar to where I'm from and, you know, pretty much any other area, I think. Yeah. So when, so when you're a freshman and going into your first uh, game in college, were you nervous at all? And how did it feel getting that first basket in your debut? Because you put up a great stat line and 11 points and 15 rebounds in your debut. Um, I wasn't too nervous. I mean, I already knew my freshman year, you know, obviously looking back at it now, I kind of wish I would have redshirted, but you know, at the time, you know, I I was just kind of like, I'm a freshman that's coaches probably don't expect that much from me anyway. So just go out there, you know, give it my best that I have this first game. And that's what I did. You know, I wasn't really thinking about you know, going out there and dropping 30. I just was going out there and trying to do whatever I could. And yeah. I mean, I mean, the, a double double in your uh, debut in college. That's pretty. That's pretty damn impressive uh, as a freshman. So, I mean, that. I mean, it's obviously it set up a great career for you. So your first season as a chip ball was not a great one. Your the team finished 16 and 16, six and 12 in the MAC. However, you guys, uh, your sophomore season kicked off. You guys started off the season by winning the Great Alaska Shootout Championship. What was it like playing in Alaska and winning that tournament? And did you guys do like any sightseeing around Alaska? Like, take us through that. Um. Well, obviously, as as you would think, I mean, Alaska around basketball season's pretty cold place. So you know, it was pretty cold. It it was kind of weird too because it, it it got late, you know, really really quick. Like not late, but it got dark really really quick. Like it'd be like we'd go practice at a local high school. And 2 or 3 p.m., it's already dark outside. So, you know, that was kind of weird getting used to. And that, that kind of made it hard to sightsee, too. I mean, by the time we got out of practice and whatnot, it was already dark out. So there wasn't too much to see. But, you know, it definitely was a different experience. And uh, it was fun. You know, a lot of people, I feel like, don't really think of Alaska as a place they want to go to, you know. But honestly, I, I would go back if I could, you know, if I had to like, have some more time to actually experience everything there. But yeah, it was a fun trip. Yeah, exact. No, it's just a very interesting turn- tournament to hear about you guys playing in and winning that tournament as well. Uh, as I looked in the record books, that was the last Alaska shootout uh, in 2017. So that was that's obviously a fantastic accomplishment for you. Uh, what did you, what did you major in at your uh, time at Central? Um, I majored in sociology, sociology with an emphasis on youth studies, and then uh, I minored in substance abuse. Okay, yeah, that's a that's a fanta- that's a fantastic major. Um, so for the games as, as against Western, especially especially on the road, how deep is the despisement or the you know kind of like the rivalry hatred toward Western? Is or like is it close to the rivalry of Michigan, Michigan State, and basketball in those terms? Like take. Like, how deep is this rivalry in basketball between Central and Western? Well, uh, I don't want to say it's as big as Michigan, Michigan State, because, I mean, that rivalry is, I mean, the Central-Western rivalry, I feel like, is between people that went to the school or go to the school now. The Michigan, Michigan State rivalry is just people that didn't even go to either school or just pick a side and, you know. So I think it's a little bit different, but it's definitely a big rivalry for sure. And, uh, you know, playing there, it's definitely, uh, it's, you know, gets your adrenaline pumping. It's a, it's a different experience, especially, you know, being them there. You know, that definitely feels great, and you want to do that as many times as possible. Well, especially all the times you guys went in there and you actually and you guys beat Western pretty good. Uh, it's, but that actually, that probably felt best of all, uh, and probably winning at home and uh, at McGurk Arena as well. So, so now you guys that year would make the CIT tournament. Uh, the, and that season, beat you guys beat Fort Wayne, Warford before losing to Liberty in the quarterfinals. 
Uh, tell us what was it like playing in those environments in that type of a tur- in those tournament games because that those any college basketball tournament always has high energy. Yeah, uh, it was cool. I mean, just being able to go because we we didn't we didn't play any of the games at our place. You know, we were traveling, so just being able to travel and you know see these different places, going to Virginia. Uh, I think Wofford was in either North Carolina or South Carolina. I forgot which one, but you know, going there and I mean. It was a good experience, too, basketball-wise, because, I mean, Wofford, I think that year they had beaten North Carolina, if I'm not mistaken, or they might have the next year, but they had a player on their team uh, who was, like, the leading three-point shooter in the country, and yep. I think he had, like, 35 on us. We beat him, but he had, like, 35, and I was like, wow. Yeah, because what I remember this Wofford... The, the... I get, I get... Yeah. I remember Wofford had Wolford had a uh, they had a uh, per, you know they made the NCAA tournament a few years ago I think with that ex- same player that you're talking about uh, yeah. late play so that's that's definitely interesting to hear so so now Kevin uh, I'm gonna ask this is uh, a favorite segment that we like to do with every single one of our guests that we've had on this show uh, it's called Rapid Fire Seven just seven random questions about you guys to get to know you better so yeah. fa- so favorite college town to visit as an opponent. Uh, I'd say Ohio. Yeah, right, like Miami, Ohio, Ohio, because there's a lot of back Ohio t- Ohio uh, based teams in the MAC. I'd just say Ohio, Ohio regular Ohio, just because it's uh it's a pretty nice arena, pretty big arena, and the the crowd's usually pretty energetic. All right. So uh, if you had to eat one fruit for the rest of your life, what would it be? You say fruit. Favorite food? Uh, if you had to eat one food the rest of your life. Uh, what- I'm gonna say Bush's baked beans. Bush's baked beans. Okay, yeah. those are yeah, those are good. So, favorite summertime activity? Uh swimming, swimming in the pool. Swimming in the pool. All right. Favorite movie of all time? Uh, I just say the entire Harry Potter series. I don't know. I can't pick one. Favorite Harry Potter? All all Harry Potter. Okay. Yeah. I'm more star more Star Wars my Star Wars guy myself, but uh, that's good too. Yeah, can't go wrong with either or. No, no so, you can't. So, fa- favorite place to eat in Mount Pleasant? I'm sorry, you cut out when you were saying that. I didn't hear you. Okay, uh, favorite place to eat in Mount Pleasant? Oh, uh, it was Great Wall, but it just closed down. So, now I would say Panda Express. Panda Express up there, yeah. I mean, I don't. I I think Benikins is one of my favorites up there. Can't go wrong with that, especially with other Monte Cristos and stuff like that. That those are really good. Uh, I love yeah. them. So if you could go, if you go to, if you can go to one country, what country would it be and why? Uh, I'd say Japan, just because I am. Uh, you know, I like anime. I like video games. Um, I feel like Nintendo headquarters are in Japan. I'm pretty sure Sony headquarters in Japan. Yep. And then I mean. It, anime comes from japan so japan would be pretty cool i think it interesting interesting to hear i right, finally uh favorite music artist and song by that artist i'd say j cole and bill mentality nice nice i expect that so go so going ahead now uh into your junior season you guys also you guys played in the uh junkanoo jam tourney down in uh, the bahamas what was it like playing down there, and did you guys get any free time down there? Um, it was it was really it was cool. It was a good experience. We actually had went to the Bahamas my freshman year, but it wasn't like an official game. We went there the summer before the season started. We went to the Bahamas, so you know, for me and a few other players, uh, we had we had already had that experience, and you know, but obviously, you know, Bahamas is a good. You can go there as many times as you want, and have a good time. So it was fun and. The hotel itself was really nice. The the tournament was, you know, very organized and well put together. And, uh, you know, we played against some really good teams. Um, in terms of free time, yeah, I mean, we just we – we played the games and then came back to the hotel. The hotel had a casino in it, had a pool up top, and uh, you could, like – they would drive you. Um, just ask them, and they would drive you, like, 10 minutes up the road, like, right to the beach, to the ocean. So, wow. you know, it was fun. Nice. There was a lot to do. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is that down in NASA or down uh, in Atlantis? That 
So when we went my freshman year, that was in Atlantis. Um, the Junk and New Jam tournament was in, it was called Bimini. Okay, yeah, I've heard of that. They, they have tournaments there all the time. Uh, so in one particular game in, in your junior season, you grabbed 19, 19 rebounds, one of three guards that season, and all Division One to do that that season. Was it a game plan for you just to be a re- rebounding guard, or was it just right place, right time? Um, it did, you know, something I, I was actively trying to do every game. Most of the time, you know, whoever was guarding me, usually I'm bigger than them, I weigh more than them, or if they're small, they're shorter than me, then I also have the advantage. You know, I usually had some sort of advantage when it came to rebounding, and plus I just, you know, I naturally. More of a natural born defender. You know, just knowing that. My goal every game. My goal every possible. All right. So now in that conference tournament that year, you guys beat Western for the third time that year. You guys beat Kent State before running into 18th ranked nationally ranked Buffalo. Fortunately, you guys would lo- you know go down to Buffalo. Uh, you guys would lose that game. But what, what was the game plan going into that game? Because that team. That team was a tough team to contain because they made a huge run in the uh, the big dance that season. Um, yeah, our, our about them offensively on the offensive end. That year they had a, you know they had a really good big man, and you know we've I mean, for my four years we, we were a small team, so trying to contain their big man and. Um, they have some good wings too, so just doing our best to make sure they didn't go off too. But you know, at the end of the day, we and it's pretty much every team had to do it better than we did it against every other team. Yeah. So, but so now jumping into your senior season, you guys went to play in some big uh, college basketball environments in Minnesota, Purdue, and Texas. Uh, even though all those three games would result in losses, what were those environments or their their atmospheres like playing in the Big Ten and the Big Twelve? Um, it definitely uh, it definitely was a was a cool experience. Um, you know, I remember distinctly Texas. I remember riding from the hotel. We had like a police escort to get to the game, and uh, you know, just um, Purdue that. You know, that was crazy. I mean, you're expanded for it. McGurk's a crazy environment when it's bad. So, you know, you know, when it was packed there. So, you know, playing in those, those um, high major arenas and, you know, schools like that is definitely a um, great experience. And I feel like it helped us for the rest of the season. Yeah, so... One one question I have uh, in particular in that season. So during conference play, you guys went down to Miami, Ohio in January. The game was canceled uh, in in January due to COVID. This was the first game to be canceled uh, with the virus before the NBA, the NHL, the NCAA tournament, all tournaments shut down. Take us through what they told you that day. And did you think at the time that this virus would be as big as it's been or it still is? Well, for me personally, honestly, I was seeing stuff about the virus all over. At the time, I think it was like pretty much they were talking about it. But I was like, I was just like kind of paranoid. Or whatever. And like literally we shoot around um, one of the days getting ready. I don't, I, it might have been the day of the game, but we were like having our morning. And our coach just was like, bring it in. Um, we have to leave uh, someone on the campus might have COVID-19. So then we just got in the bus and uh, left. So, uh, so yeah, so I can't admit, so that was like, you know, it made, he- it made headlines for being one of the first games being canceled or postponed. You guys would eventually make that game up. So after you guys left Miami, Ohio, uh, was the thought of the virus in your guys' minds as a team when you guys would travel, or did you guys just put it aside and just, you said, you know, we're here to play basketball. We're not here to worry about this. Yeah, we, uh, I mean, at least me, I can't speak for everyone, but I feel like, I feel like most of the team was just, well, at that, 
at that point. We were in this, I mean, we weren't right, I would say. Could you repeat, could you repeat that response? I'm sorry. I, I said, uh, you know, I can't speak for the whole team, but I'm, I think that you know, no one really cares about the virus we were just there to play basketball yeah so just now just before covid shut down basically everything and cooling the mac tournament you guys fell to ohio and that was the only game played in that mac tournament that for you know this past season do you think that your loss to ohio should not count because every other game in your the conference tournament was postponed or canceled because every game in the conference tournament was canceled you said yeah, like, do you think that your uh, do you think that your loss to Ohio uh, and the MAC tourney should have like an asterisk next to it or something because every game in that conference tournament was canceled? Oh, I don't think so. I mean, Ohio played a good game, and I mean, we finished the entire game, so I mean, yeah, because it's interesting to hear. I don't see the point putting an asterisk next to it. I mean, you know, because it's, you know, the Big Ten, the SEC, all, you know, they were just having their play-ins as, you know, they're having their play-ins for the conference, their conference tournaments as well. And they only got a few games in before they shut down as well. So now you finished your central career, 18th in total career points, 10th in career rebounds, 4th in uh, career field goal per- percentage, about 55%, and 4th in career steals. Out of all of those, which are you most proud of to have accomplished? Um... I'd probably say, you know, steals. I'd probably say steals just just because I feel like a lot of people don't, you know, they don't take a lot of pride on the defensive end. And, you know, for me personally, I mean, my my first year, my freshman year, even though I didn't play much, I mean, pretty much when I went in the game, it was to play defense. So just uh, to be one of those few players who does take defense so seriously and, you know, takes a lot of pride on in his defensive ability, you know, I, t- I think I'm most proud of that. All right. And then finally, finally for you, Kevin, do you plan on uh, playing pro in either the NBA, Canada, or overseas in the future? Yes. Uh, as of right now, I'm, I have an agent hired, and I'm, I'm waiting to hear uh, what team I could be playing for. Um, it'll probably be somewhere overseas whenever I hear back from him, but that is the plan right now is to just uh, – you know, have have as long of a career as as possible. You know, hopefully I don't get injured or anything like that. But yeah, just play for as long as I can. Yeah, because it'd be fantastic to hear your name. Uh, you know, called in the G League, in the G League or the NBA, so one of these days after uh, you build your rep up overseas, wherever you play, is either in Portugal, Spain, anywhere, anywhere, anywhere really. Uh, so thank you. So- so, Kevin, that's all That's all we have for you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we greatly appreciate your time, and we uh, we look forward to uh, hopefully seeing you on a uh, pro, pro team overseas in the future. All right, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, Kevin. All right. And what a great conversation with Kevin McKay. Sorry again about the visual and audio uh, difficulties. But I uh, hope, you, hope you enjoyed this week's version. Uh, just hearing about his time playing uh, Warren D. LaSalle and his tournament and the tournaments they played in in Alaska and the Bahamas, stuff like that. And uh, the first game being canceled due to COVID before all that ca- for all that chaos ensued. Um, so be sure to like, subscribe, and share this channel. Uh, and along visiting our website, the website will be updated at the end of this by the end of this week. Uh, and be sure to tune in Thursday for the second show of the doubleheader as we welcome Grace Butler of the Central Michigan women's volleyball team. Uh, that's going to be a great show. And remember, August 12th is uh, President Davies from Central Michigan as well. Ending, ending, ending the season with three Chippewas, so it's going to be fantastic. So that will do it for this week. And as always, keep it fresh. <laughs>